Hello to you, my fellow dark ones. How are you guys doing today? How's life? In between the episodes, we found a new friend, Baron Sniffenberg. I just did some archaeology and found an egg. That was my first find. And yes, we also have a new building, which apparently I made it in 12 seconds. You don't believe me? You should never doubt my words. We will deal with the building later on, we will fill it in with gizmos, but for the moment, we do have a to-do list for the foreseeable future. It's a lot, I know. But we are going to start today's episode by doing a bit of exploration. We also take the ancient soul, why not? Gives us more knowledge. What we are trying to find is a catacomb from the Iron Spells mod. And yes, it's 5000 blocks away. Oh, pink petals. We take some. For decorations. It's not being entirely accurate, but it seems it's down there. Fine by me. Let's have some night vision and maybe cover the hole. Yeah. Oh, I'm not a fan of waterlogged caves. I'm using the journey map to cheat a teeny tiny bit and I noticed this. You can't really read that, but it's telling me it's deep slate stairs. All I'm saying is that uh, that's not a very natural structure. We go there and check it out. Ah, that doesn't look like a catacomb. Nope. I'm sorry. Oh. I found something. Is this a catacomb? Yes. Hello, boys. So over here, what we're looking for is a very special type of mob, which I'm not even sure if it spawns here. And I guess it's super easy to get lost over here. What the? Okay. So there is a skeleton. Looks amazing. And maybe I shouldn't have touched him. <laughs> Hello. I thought you were dead. Okay. He's not dead. We know that. The thing is, I'm not really sure if I should kill him. Yeah, let's get it over with. Oh, you changed. He dropped his staff. It's not bad. So I have a bit of a confession. Yes, I was looking for a mob. This is the correct mod, but the wrong structure. We have to look for something in the nether, but apparently there is something behind here. Well, there's a tomb. Oh, chain lightning. I like that. Okay, I guess we're done here. We can go home. So what we're looking for is this one, the ancient battleground. Okay, it's not that far, but it's in the nether, so this is going to be fun. It's... wow, exactly here. So do you see these armor piles? Apparently if we touch them or try to break them... Yes, this is what we're looking for, ancient knights. Uh, we need to take a sample back home. Come with me. Maybe we take a few samples back home? They do a bit of damage. So first off, these guys look amazing. Secondly, if you kill them, hopefully, that's what you get. Netherite scrap. We're gonna make a mob farm for netherite. There is another mod called Cataclysm and apparently it gives you decent looking armor and decent tools. It also has a structure which spawns in the nether and we're going to check it out since we're here. Technically, you are supposed to find it using some sort of an ender pearl, but uh, the compass works, so why not? Oh. That's it, I guess. Hello? Anyone here? Maybe we should eat some food. Altar of fire. We need something to put in it. I guess you're the one. He has armor. Come on, don't use your shield. It's not fair. I'm assuming the burning ashes go into the altar of fire and we should get a boss. And yeah, he looks very fancy and jumps around and has 450 health. Holy. I want that hammer or sword very surprised you're supposed to defeat these guys in vanilla how are you supposed to do that oh wait a minute he does have life steal he's healing up did you just impale me you know i'm not being very successful because i can't hit him so i think here's what we're going to do we're gonna take a warden to help us maybe two of them yeah he spawned where are you oh down there thank you give me another one okay let's try this again Oops, I have been impaled. I can't see anything, but somebody's taking damage. Warden is doing a decent job. He died. <laughs> and now he's interested in me. <laughs> I land a few hits and whenever he hits me, he's at full health again. So I can't even make one mistake. And I feel sorry for the wardens. Okay, I have another plan. It's a stupid plan, but we have some arrows and we do have the seeker bow. So this should be easy. And maybe I should unlock a few spells. There is a homing projectile, does require a nether star. We do have a homing missile with lightning. It's not that bad. He's dead already. That is from evil craft. So I guess let's try this again. And I do have my bow. Does it work? I missed. You have to be closer. Well, it's working <laughs> very slowly. 
I'm really hoping that he does not have lifesteal on the projectiles that he fires. Wait a minute, we have the staff. Ouch. Oh, he's at his second phase. <sighs> well, it is taking ages, but it's working. I think he has entered a new phase. He doesn't have a shield. Yes, finally. Come on. You can die. This one should be the final one. No? Okay, I can kill you with a sword. Yeah, thank you for dying. And I was hoping he's going to drop his sword. Now, so this guy does not drop the sword. He does drop something called Ignitium Ingot. You can use it in order to make the sword or you can make decent looking armor. You know, Ignitium chest plates. So I have one more burning ashes. I might do this again. I'll be right back. It also seems to be affected by looting. So the last blow has to be done by my sword. Yay, we're done. I know what you're going to say. I look utterly stupid. <laughs> this is weird. Also, I'm guessing the sword has a special attack or something. If we hold right click, something hit me. <laughs> That's nice. But enough of fooling around. We have a to do list. Let's stick with that. Oh, wait a minute. This is actually a decent armor. It gives you more protection and more armor toughness. Can't really complain. Okay, so anyways, in between the cutscenes or whatever we are doing together, I'm trying to make more processors. We are running out of storage. I have also upgraded our furnace into an unobtainium furnace, and now it's incredibly fast. I don't really know how to demonstrate it for you, but here is some basalt. It's gone. <laughs> I think it does one stack every tick. But what we're going to do together is that we're going to start assembling some hostile neural network simulation chambers and loot fabricators. I want to get some nether stars as soon as possible. I don't know, let's go with 10. Yes, we are out of ancient debris, but it's fine. Our miners are doing a decent job. Yeah, there you go. 10 of them. And we are going to assemble everything in our new building. And I'm not gonna lie to you, yeah, there is a very high chance that we're going to need way more of them. Actually, we can have a total of 14, so why the hell not? Let us give these guys a very small test. Those are gates, correct? And we do have two data models for withers. They go inside, and there's a 6% chance that we're going to get a prediction. If we provide them with the prediction matrix. I always forget. So what I want to know is that if we get a prediction, can we extract it using a gadget? That is from pneumatic craft, remember that. Oh, we got something. Okay, the generalized ender prediction is not going in. Good, that means I can filter it from the top. The gist of the matter is I'm a bit lazy to use Xnet, so if I can use a gadget, I'll be very happy. There's like an 8% chance, so I have to stay here for a while. Ladies and gentlemen, we have two predictions for nether stars. Oh, it doesn't have power. Oh, and by the way, I am actually going to use Xnet in order to automate everything, but uh, I was just lazy with the filtering. So instead of telling Xnet that, hey, take the prediction from this simulation chamber, put it inside this loot fabricator, we just have to blacklist that prediction. Or just whitelist generalized ender prediction. It's easier with filtering. And this time, instead of inserting everything into our system, we're going to use storage drawers. Why the hell not? It's gonna save on space. Make me nether stars. Oh, you need power. I keep forgetting. <laughs> Let me get the Xnet stuff. So for those of you who don't know, the way that Xnet works is pretty simple. All you need is a controller, which I'm just going to put it over here. Does require power. So here is an ender cell from power. You literally connect every single item that you have using connectors. And whenever you don't need connectors, you just use a cable. All the devices have to be connected to a connector and then be connected to the controller, even the power. So now if I come to my controller, I have all of the machines. The first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to have a channel for energy and we are going to tell Xnet to extract the power from the ender cell and put it inside every single machine. And yes, as usual, someone is going to tell me you can also copy and paste, but it's just insert. So you just press create. So all of the machines must have power. Perfect. And now we are going to have another channel for items. We are going to ask the system to extract these matters from the simulation chambers. These are the things that we don't really need that much. So we're just going to put it in a drawer. Yeah. So extract. This time we're going to copy and paste because we do have a filter and we don't want to mess it up. And we insert to the drawer like so. So this time, if we get a generalized prediction, it should go into that drawer. Hopefully. Yep. And anything which is an actual prediction goes into these drawers. Lovely. Now that the simulation chambers are set, we need to gather a few mobs. And yes, there's also one for Mimic, which I have been trying to capture, but uh, it's not really worth it. Where is it? In order to make it basic, you need to kill 30 Mimics. And just in case you're wondering, Mimics are going to give you the Mimic prediction, which gives you all the artifacts. There's like 30 artifacts, so I'm not really sure if it's worth it, because you have to kill like 30 of them anyways. But as I was saying, we are going to need a few creatures. One of them is definitely going to be a creeper, you know, this guy. We just need to kill five more. Spiders aren't a bad idea, you know, for string. We have the spider, 
we have the creeper. For the moment, I can only think of two other mobs, so let us go and get them. One of them is the warden. Yes, lovely. And of course, the other mob is the ender dragon. And yes, I know, I'm very advanced. I'm just using snow. Oh, and by the way, just to be on the safe side, maybe we should use the knife in order to finish him off. I want the meat. I am back and yes for the ender dragon you only had to kill it twice and then it would have been basic but I killed it six times because you know I wanted the meat where is it it is also going to provide us with dragon breath and dragon egg so this is why I have a double drawer anyways I just remembered there are other mobs that I want can you find me a woodland mansion mansion okay oh my goodness it's not within 10,000 blocks if that is the case maybe we should trigger a raid none of you has a flag it's a shame no, I can hear him. I can't see him. Oh, you're the flag guy. Lovely. Uh, this time we're not going to do it next to our base because there are so many caves. And yeah, I have an extra data model. Good. Because otherwise I had to go to our own base to find one. Let us get some night vision. Thank you. And we're just waiting for the raid. Oh boy, I forgot about these guys. Oh, they died. They do have a bell. That should help. Oh, they're up there. You know, these guys will also do the Johnnies. But if I get the actual boss, he's going to drop totems of undying. Basically, I just want to get some emeralds. That's it. <laughs> There's like one dude left and I have no idea where he is. <laughs> you know, we just bring the bell. Come on. Oh, he's here. Hello. Ah, yes. You're here. Now we kill everyone. What the hell are you? What was that? Yeah, I think we need to trigger one more raid. Also, the guy that I was very confused who he is was a necromancer and he drops a summoning staff. This is from Eidolon. I just noticed because he dropped a staff and that's it. <laughs> I hate this job. I shouldn't save villagers. Yes, we are doing it for the bees. So I just got two evokers and well, the data model is not going to work. And just to prove that it's not going to work, insufficient data in the model. Please insert a basic model or better. Because every time that I'm trying to upgrade the data model, I do actually get a comment that it doesn't need to be basic. The problem is that every time I just get like one evoker and that's not good enough. Okay, we have another banner guy. You come with me. And this time we are going to be smart about it because I'm tired of fighting raids. Uh, we're going to make some mob swaps. Six of them. That should be good enough. And now we shall trigger the raid. Oh, and uh, yeah we take the bee. This time the goal is to take a few samples from the evoker and that's it. We do have mob grinding utilities in this mod pack so I can just get an evoker egg. This is hopefully the last wave. Yep, it is. You're the evoker. Wait, we have one sample. Two samples. Well, I'm missing one sample but I guess we have enough. Maybe we take you. You look cool. So now that we have the samples, what we need to do is to take some buckets of experience, mix it with the swap and the seed, and we will get a chicken feed. And I guess I need to find chickens. Oops, I forgot. Why the hell did you spawn me here? I don't really want to make a spawner out of evokers, so we're just going to use the spawn eggs in order to upgrade our data model. If I find a chicken, I can't find a single chicken. We have to sacrifice these guys. Here are the evokers. And we kill them. And of course, I think we can just keep one of the eggs. Why not? Oh, and uh, by the way, I also did the witches. Well, I have been thinking, in this room, we have space for 14 simulation chambers, correct? Only five of them remain, so let's get it over a bit. At least there should be something that I can mark off the clipboard. So, Enderman, which is going to be like super easy. Slimes are never a bad idea. They're always useful. And yeah, I was just looking for a swamp. That is an interesting building. Is this also from the iron spells? Where's the door? Well, there's a door on the roof. That's actually a lovely starter base. Hello. Pyromancer. I'm immune to fire. I'm very sorry. He is burning his own house down. Is that a slime? Yes. We actually just need the one because he's going to multiply anyways. Hello. That was weird. <laughs> and since I really want to have the Snow Queen, uh, we need to fight a few bosses. I really hate the Hydra, but we needed his head. Oh, that was super fast. You know, I just entered from there and here's the boss room. Hello, boys. Whoop. That was lucky. Well, we are basically cheating using scaffolding. We didn't really think this part true because we don't really have anything to kill her with. Maybe that? Oh, yeah, it does work. Well, flight would have helped. So I never learned how this works. Oh, like that. Worst boss ever. Also, I don't have a feeling I shouldn't jump. Because, you know, we can't really fly and I think I will take fall damage. Wasn't really sure if we had to kill the Alpha Yeti too, but we're here anyways. But very cool, we have arrived. Penguins! Bye. 
I love penguins. So as usual, we are going to be a bit cheaty and we're just gonna scaffold up. It's actually a huge distance. She should be in this one. This is the tallest one. Oh boy. Takes ages to break. Okay, we're in. Oh, we just need some samples. She ran away. So first off, it seems that she's stuck because she's also kind of glitched. Okay, it wasn't actually that complicated. That was just a visual glitch. I relogged and well, I found her and I took a few samples. Oops. Oh, that didn't hurt. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back from adventuring and we have two rows of loot fabricators. Just to refresh your memory, we have Withers, we have the Phantom, we have Spiders, we have Creepers, we have the Warden and we have the Ender Dragon on this side. And I also added a few other mobs to the other side. So we have the Vindicator, the Witch, the Snow Queen, the Enderman, Meefs. They're not called Meefs. Yes, Minotaur. We have Slimes and we do have Ghasts. There is a slight problem that I did not foresee while using the gadget and you're looking at it. But it's fine, we don't really need that many slime balls. But I did discover something very important which concerns us a bit. So if you look at my FPS, it's normally just above 110. Over here, it suddenly drops and I think I found the culprit, AE2. So if I open the terminal and, you know, browse a teeny tiny bit, the FPS goes down to like 74. Sometimes it goes to like 40. So I don't know, AE2 in this version of Minecraft looks amazing, but apparently it's a bit buggy. I guess next episode we have to go with refined storage, there's no other way, unfortunately. Did you find any seeds? You're useless. AE2 or refined storage doesn't really matter, but we have something off the list. Hostile neural networks, that was it. It's not fully automatic yet, we were supposed to have a quantum ring from AE2 so that we can auto-craft some prediction matrices and put them inside the simulation chambers, and also hook up the drawers into a storage bus. But I guess now we have to go with refined storage. Other than that, everything else is fully automatic. Anyways, I have also made a promise to Lord Traverse of Darkness, the handsome creator of Bubbly Hearts, to try something this very episode, and that is to make the Vitality Blade. I couldn't make it until now because we were out of bones. Oh boy, we're out of everything. Ah yes, the other problem was apples. But fear not, I do have an apple sapling. Never been so poor, it seems that this is a very expensive mod. I'm just trying to make every single heart and that's taking a while. I think we're good. Here is a blue heart canister. We have all four of them. We need to make a soul heart canister. Don't you worry, I have the hearts. Yes, we just literally killed the ender dragon. We're good. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the vitality blade. Wait a minute, you can put heart canisters in it. So right now it's doing eight damage. We add the hearts. It's doing 14 damage. Holy! But that's not the thing. Apparently, there is also an easter egg for us. But this one is just for us. If we name it my beautiful eyes, it's going to have a different texture. <laughs> I mean, like that's... I really do. This doesn't have a single enchantment. And it does half the damage of Morgan. Lord Traverse of Darkness, I'm very sorry that I got the Morgan. This is way better. I go get some bones. Oops. I was killing some gas and when I came through the portal, uh, the portal was off. I think a projectile went through the portal or something. Don't know why I made it out of steel, but it's fine. We just need some bones. Oh boy, the wither bone <laughs> is actually very rare. I think I killed like 200 skeletons, maybe more, but it's good. For the moment, this should be enough. I just wanted to remind you that this guy does 52 damage without any upgrades. I did add a few more heart canisters and yes, for the first time, I'm sacrificing my own hearts to upgrade my sword. So let us see if we can get some enchantments. Sharpness 10, that's an axe. Oh, Bane of Arthropods. But it has looting. Well, we are back from exploration so we can mix and match. That would have made my fight so much easier. Actually, it's been such a long time that we have all the souls. This is just a very small update. It has been maybe 45 minutes later and I'm still working on my beautiful eyes. Mesmerizing, I know. I think this is going to be the only tool that we're going to waste our Godforged pearls. Needs 150 levels. Okay, we have 630 orbs. The obelisk is empty. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to reach 150 levels. Yeah, we're almost out of orbs. Yeah, we're out. Uh, it's fine. We have the Tome of Ancient Knowledge. This could take some time. 150 levels is a lot. 150 levels is a lot, but I think it's going to be worth it. We also get empty sockets. Oh, the sword is now called Piercing My Beautiful Eyes of... something. Surgical Precision. <laughs> okay. I found only one epic gem and that is the Flawless Gem of the Samurai. So we will have 40% critical chance. I'm actually just going to try it on a warden. Wow, that did 100 damage. Depends on the critical damage, I guess. 
I really love the sword, but we have things to do. Maybe we should move on. Moving on, let us check the list. So, Bubbly Hearts is done. You know, we did manage to get the sword. And on the second page, Blue Ice is also done. We don't actually have a production of Blue Ice, but the Snow Queen is going to give us packed ice. You see? We have 1.9 thousand. I got her just because of packed ice, which we can convert into blue ice, then dry ice and use it inside our reactors, but we also get trophies. And if we cut the trophies, we're going to get the ice bow, ice sword, and the glass sword. I was planning to use the glass sword and make it unbreakable, but uh, yeah, we have a better sword now. But I have also made another promise, and that is the graveyard. So let's start working on that. For the graveyard, we're really not going to go that crazy this episode, because first off, I'm out of stone, and secondly, I do have another project in mind. And I really wasn't joking about the stone. <laughs> but basically, we are going to have a gateway. I'm going to cover it with enchanted ash, because we don't want the undead to walk off. We want to have a few guardians of the graveyard, and they're going to be the ancient knights. They don't burn in sunlight, but I think it's because of their helmet. I like a certain pattern for spruce planks, uh, so let's get some of that. Oh, it's not like the one from Chisel. We might have to change it later on. Not maybe, definitely. So here is an ancient knight, and I'm hoping... Oops, he can cross. <laughs> I thought you were the undead. But I think they're tall, right? Yeah, they seem to be taller than two blocks. I did try my best. This is the best way of keeping them in for the moment. But one of the guardians is going to be called Mr. Apex Predator and the other one, Mr. Kaffel. Hello. Since their number is a teeny tiny bit limited and I don't really want to lose them, please let me know if they burn in sunlight. Well, they're not the undead because they could walk across the ash. Maybe we can just have them roaming around the graveyard. But later, they do a lot of damage. For today, the number of graves that we would be able to add... Are you... dead? Huh. Well, we do have a few essence of the undead. We have to keep one of them in the drawer. I don't know, if you don't have anything inside, uh, it's not gonna collect any of them. We have three over here, and I should have a few in my backpack. Yes, two. So for today, we are going to have nine extra graves. I'm very sorry, this is very rare. We do have nine brand new graves, and yes, this is the tenth one, because Mr. Sazdos wanted to be buried next to Mr. Melonhead. We have Dudu, his body is still here. We have Daltino, and yes, you did mention that I cannot pronounce your name, and you were absolutely right. <laughs> I can't. Can we go with Gree? We have Darken Plays, we have Abe, some Rando, Alireza, and Serkan. Oh, you can't see the umlaut. I'm sorry. I think this is just for Christmas. In the new year, this should be gone. Hello, boys. Guard the graves. Kill everyone. Oops, not me. I'm already dead. I had to add one more drink me over here because Min Games FR wanted to be a drink me. So there you go. Lightro Knight wanted to be a star uncle, and you're stuck on the wrong side again. I don't know how he jumps. Oh, actually, I think I know. He goes over the barrels. It's fine, I can put trapdoors. Anyways, Speedy wanted to be a golem. But I'm also out of the essence of the undead, so we can't have more graves, and I'm also out of name tags, and I don't have an alchemy catalyst. There are eight more people left, so I'm hoping by next episode, we will finish the list. Wait, wait, there's one more teeny tiny project. Let's do it really fast. Well, I was just editing the footage, and I noticed we're a bit over time. The main main project that I wanted to do was to have the netherite scrap farm up and running. But unfortunately, I really want to do that with the mob crusher. You know, the one from Industrial Foregoing. And whatever we do, we can't really get there today. So here's what we're going to do. First off, we're going to upgrade our Dank Null. That should give me more storage. Because, you know, I mine and I get a ton of ores and I don't know what to do with them. We are also going to resupply the matrixes. Oh my goodness. And I guess now what we need to do is to just get some rubber and call it a day. This is Industrial Foregoing. Everything starts with Pity Machine Frame. One stack is good. And I am also going to do everything by the book because if we get a teeny tiny bit of latex, uh, they're going to give us a tank. Well, actually, two tanks. Why is it two tanks? Mount of stone. <laughs> Literally. It's okay. We have our extractors. For the moment, we're just going to set them up over here. And I think we need some acacia. Acacia gives you the best yield. And remember, we just need one bucket. I don't have that many ender gates. We can provide three of the extractors with power. They should go a bit faster. Yes, yes. Another thing that you should remember is that a bit of dire wire is never a bad idea. Oh, that is one bucket. Thank you. So that means you're going to give me two tanks and that is perfect. Just that why both of them are half full. It's fine, we can transfer the fluid. I also have a feeling that we need one bucket of latex in order to make the latex processing unit. And we also need a bucket of water and I'm lazy. So there you go. 
<laughs> I shouldn't have been lazy, you need water. That actually gives us a perfect opportunity because I always wanted to make the urn of endless waters. And yes, it's very true that we don't have prismarine, but we can craft it. I'm extremely happy that we automated these guys. So this should be like the Everfull urn from Thorncraft. Let's see if it actually works. Thank you, thank you. If we put it next to something which does have a container, it should fill it in with water. Oh, I have to specify a location. Position set. And send it over here. I don't think it's understanding what to do. Can you put it inside the tank? It's fine, I'm not picky. We use a sink. We're going to get tiny dry rubber. And in the meantime, since I have been reading, yeah, the problem is that it does need to have source. It consumes quite a bit for one bucket. It's fine, it's an urn, I like it. We will use it later on. For the moment, the only thing that I want is two pieces of plastic. Actually, it seems that uh, we need quite a bit more. Okay. There's a quest reward. All I wanted to make was a block placer so that we can automate the production of plastic. I don't really want to load that many chunks, so I think we're going to do it here and we are going to try and make it very compact. So we're going to have our fluid extractors. We're going to have four of them. Each one of them is going to get an acacia log. Also digging in this biome is the worst. You have moss, you have mud, you have dirt. And in some places you have stone. You have to change your tool every three seconds. <laughs> so one block placer goes here, not like that. We want it to face upwards. Yep, like that. We are going to need one more block placer, which does need plastic, which is fine. That one goes over here. They are facing upwards, so if we place something inside them, they're going to place it over there. For making it extremely compact, we are going to have a few gadgets. Four of them. Oops. That's the problem with gadgets. They just break. These two are going to receive the latex processing unit, like so. Yep, latex is going in. And the other two are going to receive a dimensional tank. Because here's the thing, in the recent version of Industrial Foregoing, yes, you need latex in order to make rubber, but you also need it in the dissolution chamber. And yeah, even though we have rubber trees from Greg Tech, Acacia seems to be the best. Tripled when powered. Cool. For powering everything, we are going to use an ender cell and four of these advanced wireless block chargers. They do have a garbage range, so they have to be one block higher. Something like this is fine. These guys are getting power. It's not a crazy amount of latex, is the thing. Maybe it is. You know, plastic seems to be a very easy thing to automate. The problem is making it very small and tiny. There are so many steps involved. But yeah, we are getting tiny dry rubber. That's good. We want that tiny dry rubber to go inside a crafter from RF Tools. And you know, we just set a pattern. We shall have one more gadget. And I did not manage to find any type of powered furnace, so we're going to use the resourceful furnace. This is also from Industrial Foregoing. And yes, it's getting power from the wireless thingies. And yeah, we get plastic. I mean, technically speaking, these furnaces are also powered with power. But if I move the wireless heat transmitter, then I have to reset everything. I didn't want to do that. The only thing remaining is that we have to provide it with acacia, which I think we can just have a botany pot. It's not going to be super fast, but breaking the logs is also not that fast. So I think we should be able to keep up. The other problem is that we are going to get acacia saplings. So I brought a filter. We want to whitelist acacia logs. I just made myself a filter destination tool and I have linked it to this block placer. So if I put it inside, yeah, it's being highlighted. So we just do this with the other one, like so. And let's put it on round robin. Yeah, we are getting acacia in both of them. And of course, we're just going to void the acacia saplings into a trash can. Well, this works. We're getting latex. We're getting rubber. I don't really know how to extract from the furnace. So I guess we just entangle it. Of course, we can just cover it and, you know, call it a day. Yes, neat and clean. Ish. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.